sitting for years out the back of a bush block in rural Darwin. This old taxi could easily be mistaken for any of the myriad of wrecks left rusting away under the top end sun. But this particular vehicle has a history, one of life and, more importantly, one of death. Max's story was one of frustration, perseverance, extraordinary courage, really. I said, drive, it's 3,000 kilometres. He said, I know, I know how big Australia is. He said, he said yes, he said, I'm going to drive it, and if I, if I don't get there, what's it matter? And it was a good point. And so he did. It was 1996, and 65-year-old Max Bell was in a bad way when, thousands of kilometres away from his home in outback New South Wales, the Northern Territory Government made the shock move to legalise voluntary euthanasia. Mr Bell sensed an opportunity and made the epic dash north through the harsh centre of Australia in his taxi. The cab that became known as the last cab to Darwin, but it was a cab that was driven here by a man who was dying of stomach cancer, a taxi driver from Broken Hill, who heard about this new law, this world first law, coming in on the 1st of July 1996. His journey eventually captured in a hit Aussie film starring Michael Caton. What are you going down for? None of your business. But there was no Hollywood ending for the cabbie. Other than Philip Nitschke, Darwin's doctors refused to assist, fearful after a challenge to the fledgling law by the Australian Medical Association. I needed three other doctors besides myself. We needed four signatures on a piece of paper with that world first piece of legislation. And I couldn't get one. I couldn't find a single doctor who would go and see Max. Disheartened and on death's door, Max Bell got back in his cab and drove the 3,100 kilometres home. It was a tragic story. Uh, Max died a miserable death in Broken Hill. He, he went back there and uh, uh, was, became a patient at Broken Hill Hospital and it was his worst uh, nightmare, um, realised. But his story didn't fall on deaf ears. ABC's Four Corners charted Max Bell's last ride. But I have a strong mentality and uh, I, I'm sure I could almost go through anything. When the programme went to air, there was one specialist in town who was so ashamed um, on behalf of his uh, profession uh, that uh, they had um, um, ignored Max's pleas for um, help, that he, he volunteered. And uh, although Max wasn't himself uh, able to avail himself of uh, that specialist um, uh, signature, um, the first person to die, Bob Dent, um, certainly was. Less than two months later, Darwin man Bob Dent became the first person to successfully access legalised euthanasia in Australia. Only four people would ever access the Territory's law before it was shut down by a Conservative federal government and the Territory was banned from legalising voluntary assisted dying for decades. That was because of this car and Max Bell not being able to utilise it. And so this basically epitomises that whole story and the failure of the law and then the subsequent um, partial success of it. Years on from Max Bell's failed attempt, the issue is now legal in some capacity in every Australian state. And last year, in 2022, the federal ban was finally overturned for the Territories. The Northern Territories Museum and Art Gallery is now assessing Mr Bell's taxi, which he gave to Mr Nitschke before his death, for its collection. From a history point of view, this is hugely important, very significant and it's one of the few things that will help tell that story uh, into the future. Hope this Broken Hill taxi may be saved from a fate of being left to rust away. A dignity Max Bell himself was never afforded.